In the final scene of Kill Bill Volume 2, Beatrix Kiddo, played by Uma Thurman, has just reunited with BB, her daughter, after defeating Bill. BB is watching a mid 20th century cartoon short called The Talking Magpies from her bed. We hear the following from one of the magpies in the cartoon as he speaks to a black eyed Susan Flower. Well, 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 if it ain't the little flower. <laughs> the camera soon pans to the bathroom where Beatrix is crying on the floor. We'll return to the magpies later, but first let's explore the symbolism of the Black Eyed Susan throughout Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2. Throughout both films, Beatrix is made to look, quite literally, like a Black Eyed Susan through costume design. The flower itself is bright yellow with a blackish center that has a reddish and sometimes brownish hue around it. Beatrix is dressed in this fashion during several prominent fight scenes. The most obvious example is when Beatrix is taking on the Crazy 88s and tracking down deadly Viper assassination squad member Oren Ishii in Tokyo while wearing a bloodied yellow jumpsuit. This look is also achieved in the fight scene with squad member Vernita Green in Volume 1 with a beige jacket and maroon shirt, and also in the fight scene with Elle in Volume 2 with a beige shirt and bloodied chest. Even Uma Thurman's fair skin and blonde hair color contribute to the imagery throughout the films. When she receives a rare sword from Hotori Hanzo in Volume 1, Hanzo even refers to her as a yellow-haired warrior. Beatrix was also known as the Black Mamba when she belonged to the Deadly Viper Assassination Squad, in reference to the snake, but it's also a nod to the Black-Eyed Susan when viewed in this specific context. The visual metaphor is not only applied to Beatrix, but also extends to design of props, sets, and color editing. In the fight scene with Vernita Green in Volume 1, the colors yellow and red are everywhere, including the art hanging on the walls of red spots that resemble both the pattern on the flower and the bloodstains that Beatrix carries throughout the fight scenes. Beatrix arrives at Vernita's house driving a stolen truck which is bright yellow with red flames on the grill and bright red interior seats. When Beatrix and Vernita take a break from fighting in the kitchen, Vernita starts making a bowl of cereal. The box of Kaboom is bright yellow with big red letters in the center. Vernita's attempted shot misses Beatrix, who then kills Vernita with a knife to the chest. In an overhead shot of the aftermath, the Kaboom box and spilled red cereal lies in the center of the frame while surrounded by yellow walls. My favorite allusion to the Black Eyed Susan is from the claustrophobic burial scene from Volume 2. Beatrix has tracked down squad member Bud at his trailer in the desert. Her attempt to sneak up on him failed as he was able to subdue her with a shot of rock salt to the chest. Bud is relishing in his ability to torture her with a Texas funeral in which he plans to bury her alive in a coffin. When Beatrix tries to protest while tied up, Bud threatens her with Mace, another nod to losing an eye. If you're gonna act like a horse's ass, I'm gonna spray this whole goddamn can right in your eyeballs. I'll burn them right out of your fucking head. Then you're gonna be blind. Burn After Bud buries her, Beatrix then makes her way through the casket with her hand alone, using the technique she learned from Pai Mei, who Bill had introduced her to years before for training. Beatrix digs herself out of the soil and rises to gasp for oxygen. In this scene, she is sprouting from the dirt as if she actually is a flower. It's another visual cue for the underlying symbolism. The following morning, she tracks down Bud's trailer once again, and so begins her thrilling duel with Elle, Bud's sister, and final member of the Deadly Viper assassination squad. Elle has just killed Bud with a black mamba snake, and now only Elle stands between Beatrix and her final quest, Bill. The battle ensues, and we learn that Elle, sporting an eye patch, lost her eye to Pai Mei, and then tells Beatrix that she killed Pai Mei out of spite. With the eye patch, Elle has a permanent black eye. She is drawn up to be the antithesis of Beatrix. She remained loyal to Bill, disrespected Pai Mei, has blonde hair, and is just as dangerous when seeking revenge. She's dressed up to be another black-eyed Susan. Beatrix eventually wins out, plucking out Elle's other eye, just as Pai Mei did the first. It's a poetic end to the scene, and once again emphasizes the focus on eyes as part of an ongoing theme. Even in the very first scene of Volume 1, we see Beatrix with a black eye. She has been beaten to near death by Bill and the Deadly Viper Assassination Squad during her wedding rehearsal at a church. In a later flashback of the scene, when the local police arrive, we can see the black eye even more clearly as the scene is in color. The black eye is also bloodied and centered, surrounded by blonde hair. Beatrix lies in a dark red pool of blood. 
There are endless cues to pick up on throughout Volumes 1 and 2 that paint Beatrix as a black-eyed Susan. Before we get into why the black-eyed Susan was chosen to symbolize Beatrix, I want to return to the cartoon that BB is watching at the end of Volume 2. In the scene with the talking magpies, after mention of the little flower, we see an elderly man in the cartoon listening intently to what he thinks is an advertisement from the radio as the camera begins to pan to the bathroom where Beatrix is lying, and we hear the following. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. Flash. Do you have a magpie in your home? If you do, you are most fortunate. The magpie is the most charming bird in all the world. He is the best friend the farmer ever had. Treat him gently. Treat him kindly. And always remember, the magpie deserves your respect. Hello, everybody. The magpie represents Pi May. He deserves your respect, and we've seen the consequences when he doesn't get it with L. Pi May's teaching saved Beatrix from Bud's Texas funeral, L's sword fighting, and eventually Bill, on whom she executed his famed five-point palm exploding heart technique. Bill was the one who first introduced Beatrix to Pi May, and when he did, he told her, whatever Pi May says, you do. In Volume 2, we see Beatrix endure excruciating labor to learn from Pi May and live up to his expectations. In the end, it is clear that it is all worth it. In Volume 2, Pi May is dressed to look like a magpie, all in black and white with patterns that resemble the bird. The name Pai Mei, while of course not unique to the Kill Bill films and existing as a mythical kung fu legend for centuries, is a near anagram for magpie, featuring the same number of letters, of which five are shared. In China, the magpie is a symbol of positivity, including joy and good fortune, and is a bird known for its astounding intelligence. All these concepts and characteristics apply to Pai Mei. In the scene with the cartoon, when the camera finally lands on Beatrix in the bathroom, she is sobbing. They are tears of sadness, relief, and joy as she collects herself following her journey. She has emerged the victor, not only in her battles, but also by reuniting with BB. When she lets out a quiet thank you and smiles, we know it's meant for Pai Mei. The little flower was graced by the most charming bird in all the world. <sighs> So why the Black-Eyed Susan? The Black-Eyed Susan flower is known to be very durable, resilient, and adaptable. They often last through difficult conditions and have come to symbolize encouragement. All of those traits certainly characterize Beatrix, but there's more to it. Let's focus on the origin of how the Black-Eyed Susan gets its name, which is believed to have been derived from a 1719 poem written by John Gay titled, Sweet William's Farewell to Black-Eyed Susan. The poem is about a romance between Susan and William, which doubles as a story about flowers that bloom together. Sweet Williams are also a flower, one of which that is known to bloom well with black-eyed Susans, which Gay spins into a story of romance. In the poem, Sweet William is called to battle and must say goodbye to Susan, but promises to return to her. Bill is, of course, a commonly used name in place of William. The following text from the poem draws a few parallels to the relationship between Beatrix and Bill in the film. O oh, Susan, Susan, lovely dear, my vow shall ever true remain. Let me kiss off that falling tear, we only part to meet again. Change as ye list, ye winds, my heart shall be, the faithful compass that still points to thee. Take particular note of, we only part to meet again, and my heart shall be the faithful compass that points to thee. Throughout the entirety of the Kill Bill films, everything is building towards the inevitable confrontation between Beatrix and Bill, and it's eventually Bill's heart that explodes when Beatrix executes the five-point technique. As the poem continues, Though battle call me from thy arms, let not my pretty Susan mourn. Though cannons roar, yet safe from harms, William shall to his dear return. Love turns aside the balls that round me fly, lest precious tears should drop from Susan's eye. After seeing the animated black-eyed Susan appear during the cartoon in Volume 2, it is followed up with a shot of Beatrix crying in the bathroom. However, the premise of the story is flipped in Kill Bill. A battle did call Bill, at least in the form of leading a team of the world's finest assassins, but he didn't leave Beatrix behind like Susan was in the poem. Beatrix chose to walk away. Tarantino takes a story about a sorrowful woman left behind and flips it into a story about a woman taking matters into her own hands to defeat her ex-man. In the end, the tears drop from her eye not for Bill, but because she finally managed to defeat him and reclaim her life with her daughter. Once the poem is considered alongside all of the black-eyed Susan imagery in the film, it's possible to interpret the entirety of the Kill Bill story across both films as being an allegory for Gay's poem from 1719. Even a few of the scenes with Bill at the end of Volume 2 feature a color palette resembling the reds, purples, pinks, and whites of the Sweet William flower. 
When Beatrix lies on the bed with BB at Bill's house, before the final confrontation, BB is wearing pajamas that feature pink flowers on it, and on either side of her head on the pillowcase are flowers, one yellow and one red. The flowers are meant to symbolize Beatrix and Bill, and BB is in the middle of it all. If you're still not convinced, in Volume 2 there is a flashback scene to the church on the day of the massacre that nearly took Beatrix's life. Bill has tracked down Beatrix and the two, not having seen each other since Beatrix left him, trade subtle slights while ultimately remaining calm. Bill starts fooling Beatrix into thinking this might actually be a non-threatening visit. Beatrix asks Bill if he's going to be nice, and he responds. I've never been nice my whole life, but I'll do my best to be sweet. I always told you, your sweet side is your best side. I guess that's why you're the only one who's ever seen it. Sweet Bill, sweet William. <laughs>